Hello, this is Julia Bushkova again, and I am continuing my talks about the bow and the bow hand. Uh, in this one, I would like to address some myths and misconceptions, or just bad habits, perhaps. We pretty much all are acquainted now, by now, with the idea that we can use our hand as the paintbrush the forearm being a handle, the hand being the wrist being the bristles, and when you paint, obviously, this is the moment you will make, correct? So when we paint with a bow, we're going approximately at this angle, and then this movement becomes looking like that, the paintbrush. So with the bow, uh, it becomes here. Very easy to make, very natural movement. Uh, I am completely going with what my hand wants to do, what my arm and my hand want to do. And that is pretty much the principle of dragging the bow on the string. Again, for those who watched my previous video, and uh, I talked there about holding the bow too much, that relates to that as well. And if you go again more maybe on D string, uh, basically we drag the bow down, using the forearm, thinking the forearm, arm and forearm, moving, and then bow basically dragging. Now, that sound might not be very pleasant, but that's pretty much what's happening on the way down. On the way up, we're staying still in the lower part of the bow, where the bow plays with its own weight. You don't need to add the weight. Uh, you drag the bow up, which is really not up, but left. And here, drag it right. And here, drag it left. just don't stop in between and you have very nice easy smooth situation connections uh, at the frog which is really a difficult part for many people another thing um, following this we can go to the middle part of the bow and there we need to use some of the pressure to make up for the weight that the bow had at the frog. So that is the index finger, when the index finger will do that. And a very good exercise for this is to actually depress the bow and the hair of the, uh, the stick to the hair of the bow. And holding it at pressed, depressed state, uh, do mimic the same exactly movement. It's slightly harder because you do use pressure at this point, but you can see that my wrist is still going up uh, or right and left or down and up. With some students and perhaps with some not students, I would suggest to switch the words. Up a lot of times leads people to think up the wrist too much and down, actually I haven't seen people doing too much of down, too much of up. We all have seen and that's not good because it gets us into the uncomfortable position of holding at the frog. So. Right and left, especially on D and G strings, are a really good idea for sometimes. So here, without effort, and you see the bow, I also do it in such a way, I basically think above the bow I am, and therefore the tilt of the bow, and I do it at the tilt at this point, tilt I mean the angle of the hair, uh, the tilt of the bow doesn't change. So in other words, I don't do this, but I glide, I allow the fingers to glide around about the stick. The stick. Uh, and at the uh, middle part, where I press the, the, into the hair, it's the same idea. The fingers, you will feel the fingers sliding. If they don't slide, your, the bow will turn. So the uh, principle here is either you turn your bow or you allow your fingers to slide. Choose one. I choose to leave my bow alone so it can do the job and my fingers are happy to be more relaxed. Now I want to address a couple of misconceptions, in my opinion, misconceptions. So I think we all agree that um, when we talk about good bow changes, we mean that type of bow changes.
when it looks uh, and definitely feels quite effortless, uh, especially if it is not at the full pressure, uh, at full weight rather, on D string, but let's say on A string. There's not much more that I would like to do actually uh, than this, because it's easy and it's very natural. However, I have seen countless situations when um, the students are taught to use this movement of fingers to do this. And what in fact I'm doing when I'm co uh, con connecting the bow uh, at the frog is not anything to do with this movement, which many people are achieving through an exercise called kole. I come from Russia, as you can hear, uh, and in Russia we had a pretty good school of sound, and I guess that kind of goes without saying, back then we had many great, great, great performers coming out there. One thing I must say for Russian school is that the culture of sound, of tone production, was really high, was very good. Um, and one thing that we never did, none of, not one of us, was Kole. So when I came to this country, uh, actually I was asked many times, oh, you must have been very good in Kole because, you know, your bow handling is so good. Well, I didn't know what it meant at all. So not a single Kole exercise and really nice bow changes for Oistrakh, Kogan, and so on and so forth. How did it happen? Uh, because the bow changes have nothing to do with Kole. I know that some people do that, and somehow, if they're naturally more suited to s play violin, they stumble upon the correct coordination in their hand. But believe me, they're not doing it because of Kole, they're doing it despite of Kole. Kole is useful, it's a very useful exercise, just not for the bow changes, in my opinion. So uh, what you actually want to do is to drag the bow on the string. So when you drag, the forearm leads and the wrist follows. Then when you drag again down, or as I said, sometimes to the right, the forearm leads and the wrist follows again. What happens with the fingers? Fingers stri slightly straighten on the way up slightly curl on the way down. That's just natural response of the fingers. So that's what is in the uh, base of the truly effortless bow change is that movement, the natural movement. What Kole or Kole-like uh, exercises teach uh, younger violinists is to do this. which you notice is exactly the opposite of what the hand wants to do when you drag the bow or paintbrush and so on. So in fact, it wants to do, asks us to do this. And then sometimes I ask my students, well, okay, so if you go down bow, then on down, it's that motion, right? So try to go down without the bow. Down and like this, and then up and like that. And I know it looks strange, but if you try to do it, you will very immediately, not even quickly, immediately find out it's very hard to do. This is easy to do. That is hard to do. So again, it only proves one point. It doesn't help the smooth bow changes of the frog.